Hey guys, welcome back to Living in the Mom Lane or welcome if you're new here, my name is Mandy. I have been challenged to make some type of dish or a meal, any type of food item by using things that are from my pantry, refrigerator, freezer, whatever the case may be. And I was challenged by Tamara from Southern Life Everyday Life and also by Katie from Missouri Grown Carolina Home. Katie and Tamara challenged myself and a few other ladies. So this is part of an open collaboration. I hope that you enjoy it. I will have Katie and Tamara's YouTube channel links down in my description as well as the playlist link. So when you're finished watching this video, click on that playlist link so you can watch all the other ladies' videos. I hope you enjoy it. Now I will say this is a very Southern home cooked stick to your ribs type of meal. There is one thing that I did purchase in my last grocery haul that is in this video. So that's not something that I already had, but I still wanted to include it in the video because it is a recipe to die for. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope you enjoy it. We are going to have some soup beans or pinto beans. Pinto beans is what they're actually called, but ever since I was little, we've always called them soup beans. So these are the actual beans. So last night I put them in water. I sorted through the beans. I picked out the ones that weren't good and I put them in water and they soaked all night overnight in water. It is now 8.30 in the morning. So I drained that water, rinsed them again, put them back into the crock pot. This is chunks of ham, diced ham. All I'm using is the Kentucky Legend diced ham. I was gonna use that for salad, but then I wanted beans. So uh, so I put some of that in. This big chunk of white is actually bacon grease. So that will give it some really good flavor. And then I also put a lot of kosher salt in it. And I'll probably end up adding more salt to it uh, later on as it starts cooking. So I have it in the crock pot. I am going to put it on low and just let it cook all day. With my soup beans, we're gonna have some collard greens and I just have them in my salad spinner. I probably should have done it in two batches, but it, they're just soaking. And what I used was some lemon essential oils. I just put about three, three to four drops in the cold water and I'm just letting them soak. And then I will um, rinse them really good, strain them, and then do the spinny thing with the salad spinner. And this is, I don't know if I said it or not. This is my OXO salad spinner. I will have it linked down in the description if you guys wanna check it out. The recipe for this, and I will link the recipe for the collard greens down below as well. It's from allrecipes.com, and it's kicking collard greens. It's really good. As you can see, it is splattered with food and things. I need to print out another one, and I need to get my binder going. I need to do that, but what you're going to need is olive oil, three slices of bacon. I don't have any bacon. We ended up using the whole pack of bacon yesterday for breakfast, but I do have bacon grease. So that is what I'm gonna use for the bacon. And that's pretty much just to give it some flavor, some good bacon flavor. A large onion, two cloves of garlic, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, three cups of chicken broth, a pinch of red pepper flakes, and you can leave that out if you don't like spicy stuff and it would still be just as good. And one pound of fresh collard greens cut into two inch pieces. The first thing you wanna to do to make the collard greens is heat some olive oil in a large pot. And I'm using my Dutch oven, which I got from Amazon. I will leave that link down in the description if you wanna check it out. And I also went ahead and added in my bacon grease. What you want to do is after you heat up the oil, you're gonna then add your bacon and cook it until it's crisp. And then you wanna remove the bacon from the pan and crumble it and then return it back to the pan. You're then gonna add in your onions and cook until they're tender for about five minutes. And then you're gonna add in the garlic and cook until it's fragrant. Then you want to go ahead and put in your collard greens and fry those until they start to wilt a little bit. 
So here I'm just mixing them up really good, making sure they get the bacon grease and the onions all throughout the collard greens. Once they start to wilt, you're then going to pour in your chicken broth, season it with salt and pepper and the red pepper flakes. And then you want to reduce the heat to low, cover it and let it simmer for about 45 minutes or until the greens are nice and tender. So next up, I am going to be making some easy, sweet, moist cornbread. Um, this is from Pinterest, so I will leave that link down in the description. What you're gonna need for this is cornmeal, all-purpose flour, sugar, baking powder, salt, vegetable oil, melted butter, honey, eggs, and milk. So let's go ahead and get this started. This cornbread was not as sweet as I was expecting it to be. I guess I'm just used to eating the jiffy sweet cornbread in the box, but it was still really good. So what you first want to do is measure and mix all of your dry ingredients together in a bowl, your cornmeal, flour, sugar, baking powder, and salt, and then you wanna mix that up really good. And then in a separate bowl, you're going to mix together the vegetable oil, your melted butter, honey, eggs, and milk. I did go ahead and whisk the eggs in a separate bowl and here it is in slow motion. Don't do this right here. There it goes. The egg squirted all over my shirt. So don't do that whenever you're cracking your eggs open. Once all of your wet ingredients are mixed together really good, you're gonna then add it to your dry ingredients and you wanna mix it just until it's moistened. You don't want to over mix this. You can do it two ways. You can either pour the batter into a greased nine by 13 pan and bake it at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. You're then going to want to cover it loosely with foil for the last 10 minutes to prevent over browning or you can do like I'm doing here and use a muffin tin and make individual cornbread muffins. Okay, so my first batch of corn muffins are done. I'm gonna show you why I like the USA pans. I did not spray them as you saw earlier, and look at this. They pop right out. They are perfect. You don't have to spray the pan or anything. They just pop right out. Look at these, y'all, how pretty. I put another batch in the oven. I think, I can't remember now. I think there was eight more, maybe. I don't remember. <laughs> and I literally just did it. Oh my goodness. Look how pretty those are though. I cannot wait to dig in. And here is my soup beans. Mm -mm. We gonna eat good tonight, y'all. Okay guys, dinner is done. We have my soup beans some collard greens, the little cornbread muffin, and this is some potato salad that we had the other night, but I just thought we would go ahead and put that on there. I was gonna make fried potatoes, but I remembered I had the potato salad, so um, I just went ahead and put that on the plate. Everything looks and smells delicious. So that's a wrap on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some inspiration and got you to start thinking outside the box a little bit and just, you know, finding things that you can cook that you already have.
I also want to thank Tamara and Katie for allowing me to be part of this challenge. It was really fun. Don't forget to check out that playlist link down in the description and check out Katie and Tamara's YouTube channels. Again, their link will be down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.